right. So, you know, whenever there's an adjustment in the market, um, we're advised to go back to the basics, right? And double down. Um, some of the, you know, one big thing that Cody's been sharing during bold right now is just because there's maybe less transactions out there, does that necessarily mean that, that there's less opportunity for you, right? Yes or no? The answer is, right? No, there, there, if you, there is more, there's, the, it can be the same opportunity for you, right? If you're doubling down and doing the activity it takes, right? So I wanted to talk about the four laws of lead generation because it's about simplifying, going back to the basics. And even if you get one iota of inspiration out of this and how I can help you, then I've done my duty of what I'm here to do for you guys, okay? So let's first talk about the four laws of lead generation. And what are they? Straight out of the MREA, right? Because everybody's read it, right? All right, build a database, right? Is number one, you build a database, then you feed it every day, you communicate it in a systematic way, and then you service all the leads that come your way. So what does that mean? All right, well, let's talk about building a database, okay? The, the number I wanna focus on first is actually creating that database, okay? And the big number that you guys may be hearing about over the last couple of months is 201, right? KW has done this initiative with 201, right? So let's first take a look at this little graph that you guys may have seen if you've been around for a little bit. But what I want to really focus on here is where the hockey stick takes off, right? And where is that? Is having 200 or more healthy contacts in your database, okay? That seems to generate an average of six-figure income, okay? So again, going back down to the basics, building a database and then continuing to feed it and communicate it in a systematic way, okay? Because what good is a database if you're not going to be doing anything with it? Make sense? Okay, so to get any confusion out of the way, the difference between a lead and a contact, okay? Because we seem to get down into the minutia of things and you get a lot of different answers I've noticed, okay? It simply comes down to a lead is somebody that you either haven't met yet or have had a one-time or one-way conversation versus a contact who you've actually built a relationship with. Okay, so a contact is someone you've, you've obviously established a relationship with, and a lead is somebody that you've just met or have not even personally met yet that you still need to establish a relationship with. Okay, so what does a healthy contact entail? What info do you need for it to be considered a healthy contact? All right, name, clearly. Okay, phone numbers. That way we can make texts and calls or leverage the system to make the text automatically, okay? Email addresses, that way when they're in smart plans, right, or email blasts, then you're leveraging the system on a mass scale, okay? Physical address. This is a challenge for us for whatever reason. We're in the address business, yet we have a difficulty in taking in addresses. 12% of our databases only have physical addresses, all right? What can we utilize these addresses for? Market updates. In our case, monthly neighborhood nurtures, if you're using command, right? Send out mailers. You can actually create mailing labels from inside of command, all right? For, you know, mail outs or holiday greetings or birthdays, et cetera. It's as simple as exporting them into labels. Birthdays whether it's for the actual contact or any family members, right? That way you can have a smart plan touch on that, okay? And then last but not least, probably the most important is tagging them. The idea behind all of, all of this is to simplify, right? So with tags, we can filter or group your contacts so you can then simply connect with the, right? This is about message, right? And the method depending on the market or depending on your group, your message is going to be different. So how can we simplify, filter your contacts, and then send the right message? Make sense? All right. Now, 
What I want to remind you guys is just because you've built it for any of our seasoned agents in here, don't get this misconception that you're done because this is always a constant loop, right? Or you can call it rinse and repeat, right? Because if your database is not growing, you're what? Dying, right? So do not forget that when you're building this database, you're consistently feeding it, all right? And consistently growing it. That takes you to feeding it every day. What does feeding it every day mean? Okay. Working it, right? Working it or nourishing, nourishing it, because nurturing it, those are two different things, right? So that's what I also want to make sure that you guys understand is first and foremost, Feed existing contacts with updated information, updated data. When you're connecting with your people, do you have your notes open? Are you jotting down any updates to their lives? Any kids, right? Or addition to pets or any detailed information that when you're connecting with them, you establish that personal relationship, that connection. Okay. So do not forget about consistently updating and feeding existing contacts in your database. All right, so that takes us to the next number, the rule of three, and you have this graph. So top agents in our company were interviewed and a list was made over the information that was received. And there were three pieces of information that stuck out more than everything else. Any guesses on what this graph represents? Hmm? Feedback, from Feedback from contacts. Anybody else? Yes. Great job, Brandon. Lead gen, lead gen, so your lead sources. All right. So the top hundred agents in our company were interviewed and over multiple answers, there were three that absolutely stuck out over everything else. Okay. For this is for now in the shifted market moving forward that the Focus should be on. All right. Any guesses on what number one is? Uh, wrong. Sphere and database is absolutely number one. You're so fast on that too. You're so confident, right? Working your sphere and your database absolutely is number one. Number two. Open house. Now you were supposed to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> Open houses. All right. And number three. Sure. Internet lead generation. And all right, oh, teacher's pet, right? Good job, Brandon. All right, your sphere of influence in your database, open houses and inter internet lead generation. Now, internet lead generation falls into three buckets, okay? You have your social media, okay? Social media connections, search engines. So if you're, if you're running, uh, you know, your, your um, SEOs and whatnot, your websites, results that pull up up there in your search engines, and then, of course, running as a lead aggregator, right? Social media ads so you can directly be a, be a lead generation source for incoming leads, okay? Now, communicate it in a systematic way. This is what I definitely want to focus on right now, right? Simplify, 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 okay? How can we leverage our system to simplify this task for us, because this is the most important part, right? How do we make sure that the people that are in our database are not falling through by through the cracks, right? How many of you, especially the ones that you know have been at this for a while, have had circumstances where they've known people, had relationships? I already hear some laughing, so they know where I'm going, right? Yeah. Had had relationships with people, and yet. With, because of a product or circumstance, they did business with somebody else, right? Look at CW can't even, he's trying to reach the ceiling, right? It's because, right, we're not communicating with them in a systematic way. And I know I'm in the middle of this, but I also want to point out that, yes, yeah, some of this stuff sounds so basic, yet we don't do it, right? We don't do it. And this is all it takes, guys. That's why Gary came up with these. Four laws of lead generation. You stick to these and your business is going to be successful, right? The top agents world uh, nationwide, how do they succeed? How do they, right? How do they limit the ebbs and flows of the market is because they're consistent. 
right? They're consistent. All right, so how do we simplify it? Well, anybody that's in your sphere of influence that you're adding or your database that you're adding to, they should automatically be on an, for example, eight by eight smart plan, okay? So what does an eight by eight smart plan entail? It means you're, well, as soon as they're in there, you've established that relationship, you put them in, you're connecting with them once a week for eight straight weeks, right? You're training their brain in the MREA. It says you're educating them on the fact that you are real estate and real estate is you. Okay. Inside of this, it automatically puts them on a monthly neighborhood nurture. So they're starting to get monthly updates from you on the market based on their neighborhood. Okay. So it's let's hammer them hard for eight straight weeks to train them. And then you're consistently communicating with them over time. Open houses, open house follow up smart plan. Okay. It, these are already there for you guys by KW. Everybody that you meet in an open house should go into an open house follow-up smart plan, okay? And then internet lead gen. Whenever you have leads come in from the internet, right, whether it's ads or social media, have something similar to a Facebook or social media follow-up smart plan. Now, this says Facebook on there. That doesn't necessarily mean the lead has to come from Facebook, okay? That's just what the smart plan is called. It's any social media lead that comes in. Okay. Well, yeah, Namesh, we already know that. Well, here's the thing. How do we simplify it and leverage the system to work for us? You can take all of these smart plans, okay? And you want to tag all the leads that come into that, right? As a sphere of influence, open house or social media. These are just examples I gave you. You can name it based on whatever terminology you use in your business, right? And you can use tag triggers. So what the heck is a tag trigger? So the process should be all you're doing is inputting the lead or the lead automatically came in, whether it's through an ad or an open house lead capture, okay? And as it automatically comes in and you tag them with one of these tags that are associated, you can actually have these smart plans associated with these tags. And the minute you tag them, it automatically launches the smart plan, okay? So you're not having to do these five things every time you add a contact. You're simply just adding the contact. You add the contact, the system will do the rest for you. And now it's automatically following up on your behalf. Okay? Got it? All right. Communicating with your sphere. How many times should we be doing that a year? 36 times a year. The four is how many, how, how often we should be communicating with them directly on a prospecting two-way conversation basis, right? So it's a quarterly call. I know this is this is kind of um, small. So the first what is 12 direct touches, whether it's you know, emails, newsletters, mail outs, okay? Um, pop buys, right? I know um, the florist team loves to do pop buys, right? So pop buys are another great way. Um, transaction communication, like just sold and just listed. Think outside the box, guys. Recipes, right? Um, community calendars, uh, community events, local events, right? Invitations. And then, of course, uh, our monthly neighborhood nurtures and uh, promotional items to brand yourself, right? Keep your brand, leverage your brand. Um, thinking of you cards. Make sure you have your four quarterly call plans, right? Birthdays, anniversaries. Now you can leverage the smart plans on that too. And then of course, Mother's Days and Father's Days. Holidays are a big thing. And don't forget that if you need any inspiration on what to post on holidays, they're all in designs, just brand it to yourself. Schedule those posts. And then client events. How many of you run client events in here? Why? <laughs> I was waiting, I was looking for that answer. Yeah, right? It's a personal issue. Mel, you had something? They absolutely work, right? Yeah, they absolutely work. Okay, can you guys give us a couple of examples on how you leverage the events, like what, what you guys do? Yeah, Kimbra? Thanksgiving timing, 
Thanksgiving Pi Day. I believe Sharon, you do the same thing, right? Yeah, Pi Days. Everybody loves Pi, right? So how does that how how does that how is that effective? It gives me uh, multiple ways. Oh, sorry. It gives me multiple ways to uh, easily reach out to them and touch them. I touch them to invite them, and then we give them the Pi if they show up. And of course, you get to have a conversation with them when they come by. And then, of course, we send them home with something that they can put up. I usually do a gratitude uh, card that is real pretty that they can post so they can awesome. remember where they got that from during the holidays. That's awesome. Awesome. And then it, there could also be a follow up plan, right? If uh, if somebody couldn't make it or or uh, just as a reach out to see how they right. So it, you're going to see a lot of similarities here. We talked about this during shredding hunger, right? It's about the process. It's not necessarily about the actual event, right? CW, did you just raise your hand? Oh, I, I don't know if I missed that from the slide. Did you have anything to add? Yeah, did you? Agree. I wasn't sure. I thought I saw your hand go up. Yeah. Um, we do poinsettias every year. For the and, holidays? Yeah, that's always big because we decorate um, my wife's car with Christmas lights on top and everything else. So we're driving by, we're getting a lot of attention. And then we pull up to people's homes you know, it's because it it doesn't seem to really matter what religion you are or anything else. People just like to plant, you know. Yeah. And we get calls every year. Oh, we still have the one you gave us last year. Good, we'll go to somebody else. No, but um, no, we get a lot of things for that. Then we hosted an event um at an air show for our top 100 clients. We catered. Um, I got a 1.5 million dollar deal right after that. Wow. Um, so that paid for that pretty easily, and um. Then we do, um, we try to usually do at least three a year. That's awesome. Yeah, okay. Christmas. Let me leave it at this table real quick. Cause there's two, what was that? You did an air show? You did do an air show. <clears throat> no, I know what you did. Explain that CW. All right. So Wings Over Houston does an air show here, usually every year. And um, this year, the Blue Angels happen to be the highlight of the show. And my son-in-law flies the number, was flying the number four plane for the Blue Angels. And a lot of our friends and clients knew about it. So, um, you know, we had no trouble finding a hundred people um, who wanted to go to that. It was more like limiting it really, because, you know, all we could do is 50 people each day, but we did two days, hundred people catered it. Um, we had beer, Mexican food, margaritas. Um, it was a fun event. So, yeah, that's awesome. That would work good. We've Pretty also good. done the at rent a theater, like at uh, Fourth of July, we serve apple pie, hot dogs, and do you know Independence Day or something. It's awesome. So one, so two questions specifically, maybe even for that table right there. One, do you have to have a lot of people to host an event? Uh, Absolutely. And second, does it have to be expensive? Right. There's ways around that as well. Right. So it's something that we actually talked about in our um, leadership huddle this morning is that sometimes we just overthink things way too much and then don't actually do the action. Right. So don't overthink it and do the action. There's something very specific here that I wanted to make sure that um, I pointed out. Right. Every time you're making a touch, every single touch should have a quick reminder and instructions on how to give you a referral business and identify benefits of working with you. Are we doing that when we're communicating with our people, right? Are we reminding them how, right? It's a mofer. Are you, right? It's a, you know, you're, you're looking for an immediate response. What's the call to action on, hey, do not forget that I'm here to help you and anybody else you know, right? Who do you know that I should know, right? Okay, I thought this was pretty neat too. Think outside the box, guys. The word I want you guys to internalize is experiences, right? Provide experiences. What's making you different? What's going to make something that you do that's going to resonate with these clients to make you clients for make them clients for life? Okay. Don't, you know, like think outside of the box of, oh, cut co knives and thank God they're not here today. Uh, cut co knives or, uh, or, or, you know, baskets or something like that. What about the experience? And these are some great, 
great um, examples. Right? I remember at family reunion, we heard about somebody that never does open houses, never does open houses. What they have is ice cream socials every weekend, right? Yet yeah, what's sitting right behind the ice cream truck? Their new listing, right? Hey, come get an ice cream and check out the house while you're here. You think you're getting four visitors to that open house? No way, right? So, you know, um, partner with people, right? There's gutter cleaning and junk removal. Uh, in fact, Cody's been giving that same example recently in bold is find vendor partners and provide deals to your people. Hey, I have a, you know, a gutter cleaner who's providing a discount who can get you a discount 20% off. You think anybody you partner with said, hey, is there any way you could offer my clients like a 20% discount if I bring you a bulk? Who's going to say no to that? Right? So think outside the box. An interesting one that we had heard recently was Zoom events. You know, there's some celebrities that actually you can hire for like 30 minutes or so and they'll pop on a Zoom with whoever you invited. And then it's like a meet and greet and they'll give some piece of value and, you know, whatever it is and everybody's in awe. And it's not even that expensive. I have the name for it. I'll have to put it in the Facebook group. It's not even that expensive. And yet you gave somebody an experience of somebody they, with somebody they look up to live and in person. Right? So think outside of the box. Or you can just send a Starbucks gift card, I guess. I mean, I think most of us do that already. But All right. So. So why am I even bringing some of these up? So some fact checks, right? Some statistics. Even today, don't forget that with buyers, 67% never get past the first agent, right? 74, right? Never get past, 84% uh, never get past two. This is why when we're not communicating with them, we lose them to somebody else because they already just met the random Joe Schmo at the open house. And now all of a sudden they had to do a transaction with them. Right? It's about setting that appointment, communicate with them, be consistent and set the appointment. The rest will take care of itself. Right? Same thing on the seller side. 80% never got past the first listing appointment that they met with. 91 if you count the first two, top two. So are you the first two people that somebody thinks of when they think of real estate? Like for a seller, you should be number one. You're going to get 80%. All right, so mind share, guys. This is all about mind share. All right, all about mind share. I brought this back up with a little bit of extra data. Yes, this sounds so simple, yeah, but again, we don't do it. So let's get in there and do it. All right, let's build that database, have the solid piece of data in there, right? More data, more power for us, right? And that's how much the more data we have in our system, the better it is. Right, so let's build out the database under contacts, okay? We already have a third of the US population in KW databases, right? Let's keep growing that. Feed it every day, lead generate, add information as you're connecting with them, okay? Using the lead sources that are working right now, right? And then of course, communicate with them in a systematic way. Leverage the system to communicate on your behalf, right? Leaving you more time to what? Feed it every day. Okay. And then of course, last but not least, service all the leads that come in. So how can we simplify a system, right? Once we have the leads, how can we simplify a system through a pipeline where we have our checklists in order? That way we go through the process, right? And eventually then when we leverage or any one of you that have leverage, you put, you're just plugging people into your system that you have built. All right. So talking about that system, of course, shameless plug, because I went through the first three in depth, actually systematically servicing, I mean, sorry, um, servicing those leads, I am actually going to go over Friday, okay, right here in the training room at 10 o'clock, building out that pipeline, building out that checklist per stage of the transaction and then how can we update our clients automatically through those checklists okay so if you need to do that in your system in command that is what i'm going to go over in depth on friday okay all right any ahas any questions on that just do it i love that one Ona. 
just do it. And we're here to help you. I'm here to help you, right? Norman's also here to help you. All right. We talked about tag triggers and all that. I'm going to we're, I'm going to have it out there, okay, on how to set that up or set an appointment with me and we can set it up. I'll set the tag with the trigger and you're good to go, okay? It's as simple as that. I'm giving you a simple option. Let's do it, all right? Good deal, guys. I know that was simple. Yeah, we needed to do it. So I hope you got value out of it.